When you get a question, so the example question I'm going to use today is, these days, everyone seems to have more and more possessions, for example, computers, cars, mobile phones. Our strong desire to own these things has made us less aware of more important qualities, such as kindness and concerns, concern for others. Do you agree or disagree? So when you are doing the writing in uh, writing task two, you have to remember paragraph one is always the introduction. And in the introduction, you need to paraphrase the question. And what else do you need to do? Example? Not in the introduction. Um, thesis. Thesis statement. Yes. So your thesis statement is basically stating your opinion. So you have to paraphrase the question. And this is your opinion. And this is how you open up the piece. Paragraph two. Oops. Paragraph two is usually looking at questions and dividing it into two areas. So this is where you start to look at how will I divide this up? Now, when I look at this, you need to make sure that you paraphrase the question. Any of the actual words that are repeated in the question, from the question, will be deleted, deducted from your word count. And so in task two, it is 250 words, 40 minutes. This is a good thing to remember. I find a lot of students have, can't remember how long each of those are. So when this is not a lot of time. So you have to make sure that you are dividing it equally. And if you are slow at writing, if you have not paraphrased the question, then you are going to lose marks because in this, every 10 words under, you will lose a score of 0 0.25 band. Mm -hmm. So that's important to note. So if you've used 10 words and you've only written 250, you're actually going to lose a quarter of a band mark. So is 250 the minimum? Or? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, minimum 250. So in, it's a good question because in 40 minutes, I've had some students write like 300 words. That's not necessarily a good thing because when you're using more words, you're more likely to repeat yourself a lot more repetition. So you want to keep it to like 270. Okay. That's a good amount. Okay, so this question, for instance, um, I'm going to write it as, I'm going to paraphrase this question, which in a, a lesson I would give them it. Normally in a lesson what I do is I give them the questions, I ask them to paraphrase it or to write paragraph one, mm -hmm. and then we will all review what everyone's written. So for now I will say, um, in the 21st century, many people are obsessed with uh, modern technology. So it's important when you're looking at the question is to how you're referring to this. In this question, so these days everyone seems, so I've changed it to in the 21st century many people. It says possessions, e.g. computers, cars, mobile phones. That's extremely important because some people put communication devices. Car is not a communication device. So in the 21st century many people are obsessed with modern technology, and wealth. Money. And wealth. As, uh, as instead of other, others' welfare. So I have now combined the two together. 
So I've actually said, so they, are they the, our strong desire to own these things is making us less aware of in, important personal qualities such as kindness. So I'm opening up with wealth instead of others' welfare. And then I have to put my opinion. So I normally start with, I believe this, that this is detrimental to society. So I've now stated my thesis statement that it's uh, not good for our society for this to happen. So I'm then going to look at part two. Paragraph two is where we come in with the main topic censuses. In this it says, do you agree or disagree? In multiple uh, versions, questions of these, these essays, the, this will be an agree or um, advantages es, uh, paragraph. So, and then paragraph three will be the disadvantages or the disagree. Now, there, I'm doing both sides because they've asked me, do you agree or disagree? And looking at it, I decided that I'm going to do what are the advantages of these things and what are the disadvantages. So I first plan my essay. I'm going to say, all right, what are the advantages of modern technology? So connection is one. Um, you can show status. So that goes back to the wealth, show status. And um, it allows for more flexibility. So that's where it's kind of like, all right, th this is the three supporting ideas. So this area is my supporting ideas. And again, I have supporting ideas here. And so the disadvantages of having so much is that you, um, maybe I'm going to say you lack real connections. because you're focusing more on your wealth, you're focusing more on your mobile phone, you're focusing more on that, so you don't have real. If you don't have real connect connections, this can lead to like isolation and depression. It can also, you have lack of focus in your work, in your real life, because you're actually thinking more about how much money now, the reason I put these together and we're talking about main topic sentences is that as soon as that you've compiled your three supporting ideas, that is when you can write your main topic sentence and not before. Because I have to combine these three into one. A main topic sentence introduces you to a paragraph. It explains what the topic of the paragraph is, what the theme is. So this one I'm going to say, firstly, Um, having the writing is very funny on this. Having multiple devices can improve our daily life. And I'm going to think of a word for status, flexibility. Um, I have to think about that one for a moment. I don't know. That, I haven't remembered what to the, so having multiple devices can improve our daily life and our social situation. There we go. So um, that is the topic. Are you asking me a question? Is that, yeah, I'm writing my main topic sentence. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well done. Yeah. So this is the main topic sentence for agree. So I'm basically going to say, uh, you, uh, I can also put many people believe having, and then that would be, uh, I could also say, 
actually. I would add there are many benefits. So this is stating two. There are many benefits to having multiple devices. It, they can improve our daily life and our social situation. Or, so then I would have two sentences about how we connect, how we show status, and how there's the flexibility. So then in disadvantages, lack real connections, isolation, depressions, lack of focus. Um, I would start, on the other hand, There are, I've used many and multiple, so there are lots, I'm trying to think of different ways of saying the same thing, lots of drawbacks, Ooh. drawbacks, mainly to our mental health, our mental uh, health in concentrating, concentrating, considering, concentrating, mm -hmm. uh, concentrating on our devices. So this is just a, a quick example that this would then, I would talk about lack of real connection, isolation, fear of uh, lack of focus with me there are lots of drawbacks leading to our mental health in concentrating on our de on on our devices on only our devices on so I I would rewrite that but this is just like kind of quickly writing it and then I would talk about those in it so this is like the basic structure of how you put together a task to writing. And why is this important in reading? In reading, in several of the parts, which I would then show the students, um, there are the areas where you specifically, you would, da, 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 da. there is one area which I find students have a lot of problems with, and that is when they are choosing headings. So that one is, sorry? Yeah, I think that's the difficult part of reading. Yes, choosing it's choosing headings for paragraphs. So this is usually around question 15. So choosing headings for paragraphs. The important thing is, and um, I would typically show the students uh, an, S, uh, an article written and as an example and give them one to practice. And I would also give them, for instance, this article here. So this article here, we can see that the majority of main topic sentences are on the first line or the first sentence. Sometimes they are the last sentence. But the, what you have to do when you are reading these questions is you have to read the questions and highlight the differences or the main areas. What it, does the question mean? Read the questions, highlight the main words. You have to remember that when you are the questions are typically, the questions use synonyms. So you are not looking for the same word as in the question. And a lot of people make mistakes because of that. You've got to think of, once you've highlighted the questions, highlighted the main words, think of synonyms for them. And then, when you read the actual text, you need to make sure that you understand what is the main topic of each paragraph.
And in that way, you can highlight, you, or you can, you know, you can actually choose which ones go to which ones. I think that is one of the main ways. I mean, normally I do like a uh, two-hour class in reading or in, uh, in the writing, but I think that. So, do you have any questions with that? I mean, in a, in a typical lesson, there would be examples that they need to practice and review, and see how they highlight. One of the lessons I do with the reading is also the way that you actually look through the text to make sure that you've seen numbers and that you've seen nouns, names of cities, names of people, and that you highlight it. And also it depends if you're doing the computer exam or you're doing the handwritten exam. Because in the computer exam, you uh, can highlight, but you cannot highlight in different ways. In the written one, I normally say, if there's like a number, you circle it. But if there's a noun, so as in say uh, Beijing, then you would you put a rectangle around it. So when you're skimming and scanning the text, you can actually quickly go back to a number, quickly go back to a name. And so that's all part of the topics. Okay. okay. Would you usually give like a whole passage for the student to practice? Um, yes, because you need to be able to see the main topics of each sentence or multiple, you can't just do it for like one or two. I think it's best to actually do, um, just see an example of it. So for like a time span of two hours, you will give them yeah. usually one passage? Yeah. Sometimes I'll give them two. It, it really depends on how well they're doing with it. And I have to, you know, tailor it to them and see what their needs are. If they're still not understanding, then we, we have to move. Um, I will move through it. Depends on if it's individual or if it's a group class, but I will move through it slowly and see, show them what the answer would be and how you actually come to that answer. How about writing? So how much do you want them to write? In class, I typically don't get them to write. I normally get them to bring it with them. Um, is it okay? Yeah. <laughs> yes. um, the 